Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for a new series I'm starting called Material Mastery. And this is going to be a tutorial in Blender using cycles. And in this kind of series, we're going to be going over all of the different aspects of materials so I can help you guys master material making in Blender. So for this tutorial, we'll be using Blender 2.76b, although uh, more up-to-date versions will work just fine because they contain all of the same features that this does. If you don't have Blender, you can go to blender.org and download it. It's really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of here, and we have our basic scene. I'm going to come up to here and switch over to Cycles Rendering Engine because this is very important. And this isn't something that you guys have to do. I'm just going to turn on screencasting keys here. So now on the lower left here, you can see every single key press I make. So what is the difference between cycles and internal? Well, cycles is, I like to think it's a little bit more realistic. It has more realistic lighting, more realistic materials, and it has a lot more options, especially with the node editor, which we'll be getting into in a second here. So for those of you that don't know, a material is something that covers the cube. A lot of people refer to it as a texture, however, it isn't actually a texture. A material is just like the entire thing, because a texture is just an image. A texture can't be glossy, a texture can't be, well I guess it can be see-through with PNGs, but it can't reflect anything, it can't diffuse light, a texture is just an image, and a material is so much more. So you can see over here in our menu, this is the materials menu, this little sphere right here with a uh, checker in it. You can see I have a material right here, and this is a basic material that came over from the internal rendering, but we'll be changing this. So I'm going to go ahead and click Use Nodes over here. And now you can see we got a whole bunch more options. We have Diffuse, BSDF, Color, Roughness, Normal, and then we have these same check marks or boxes that we have down here. So there are two main types of materials that we'll be using, and that is diffuse shaders and glossy shaders. Now, the difference between a diffuse shader and a glossy shader, imagine diffuse as a wall, a white wall. It kind of takes light, light hits it, and it just kind of diffuses the light across it. A glossy will reflect it. So basically, if you imagine a mirror as a perfect glossy and just a flat, plain wall as a diffuse, that's the difference between a diffuse material and a glossy material. Let's go ahead and look at it really quick. So I'm going to set up a simple scene here. We'll go ahead and move this cube up. I'm going to keep that light. I'm going to delete this camera. And I'm also going to add a plane. And I'm going to scale it up. So that way it covers the entire area. So right now we have a diffuse texture on here. And I'm actually going to add a smaller cube by pressing Alt D, shrinking it down, and then moving it down, and of course it isn't perfect. So now if I click, or if I go into rendered view here, you can see, by the way, this is just this little sphere down here, it should say solid by default. If you change this to rendered, it basically renders the image for you. So here you can see kind of what a diffuse texture looks like. So it's very plain, not much going on. And if we change this to glossy over here, you can now see that this cube has become super reflective, both cubes actually, because both cubes have the same material data. So you can see it's reflecting everything, even its reflection. Now this is kind of where we're going to play with roughness. So roughness is kind of, if you imagine how foggy it is. So if I have the roughness set to 0.05, You'll notice that the edges of this reflection kind of get a little more diffused and you can kind of see if we switch back to zero here you can see that this is perfectly like highlighted i guess and then if we switch to 0.5 oops not 0.5 0 0.05 you can see that it gets really diffused just like that and we get all these little fireflies around here but they're not important for now and if you see if we fit, switch to 0.1 it gets even more diffused and you can see there's our light source there and if we switch to zero you can see we can't see it at all, but as soon as we switch to point one, we can see it clear as day because the diffuse is kind of leaking in. And then also we have color. So I'm going to switch this back to my diffuse shader. And if we toggle with or play with the color here, you can just see it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. All the different colors on this color wheel up here, brightness over here on the right hand side, or you could adjust the individual sliders. You can also change the alpha, which really doesn't do anything unless you have a certain shader. And if you're familiar with HSV or hex, you can use that as well. So there we go. That is our basic introduction to these materials, glossy and diffuse. 
So now let's go ahead and look at something else. We're going to look at what's called the node editor. So in order to open up the node editor, we can either switch to compositing mode or we can come down here and in this 3D view window, we have these little lines down here and we can click and drag. And you'll notice our window splits. And so now we have the rendered view up top and the 3D view down bottom. I'm going to change this to the node editor. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my big cube here. And you'll notice we have four different options down here. Well, you will have three. I have four because I have an add-on installed. But regardless, come and click on this little sphere here. It might be in a different position. Now up here we have this thing called the node editor. And the node editor works by connecting these little things. These things are called nodes. And each of these circles is a different connection. So you can see if I click and drag between two, it creates a connection just like that. And if I click and drag off of them, it disconnects the connection. It's very simple and I'm sure you guys will figure out pretty quickly. So if we have the diffuse shader here and it's hooked up to the surface of the material output, that means that we are basically putting the diffuse shader on the output. Now if I come down here to add and I add a shader and I add a glossy shader, so this is the same thing as kind of switching down here except that we need to connect it still because right now it is still the diffuse shader. But if we connect to this BD or BSDF to the surface, it now becomes glossy. And you can see our roughness is 0.2, so we'll change that to 0.02, just so we kind of get that, eh, maybe even less, 0.005. There we go, just like that. So we get kind of that fogged reflection. And you can see now that the diffuse has become detached or detached or disconnected, that's the word I'm looking for, from the surface. And if we connect it again, it switches back to the diffuse texture or color material. <laughs> I screwed that up right there. So let's go ahead and try changing the color from here and it's pretty simple. You just click on the color and it pulls up the same wheel that we had before. I had hex on accidentally but you can see I can make it red, I can make it blue, I can make it this lighter blue, I can make it green, I can make it any color that I want. And you can do the same for the glossy. So if we reconnect the glossy down here and we select you can see all of a sudden the cube is changing color and we have that really nice reflection and we can also change the value of roughness in here so this is something that's kind of cool too it actually connects directly to this materials menu down here so if we have our i'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background um we can have the roughness right here and you can see it's set to 0 0.005 and we have roughness over here set to 0 0.005 and if i set this to 0.2 now you can see over here it is set to 0.2 and if I change this to 0 0.005 this changes to 0.005 so it's a direct correlation between the two now let's go ahead and look at add and mix shaders now add and mix shaders are kind of like blending in Photoshop or After Effects or any other image in, image compositing so a mix shader will mix the opacity between two different shaders based on the factor right here so if we connect both shaders to the shader input on here, it will mix the, by the way, I'm not sure if you saw that there, but if you go ahead and just take the new shader, so if I add a mix shader and I just drag it right over the line there, it will automatically connect to one of the two. Now I specifically want this connected to the bottom one just for my case, so I'll connect this to the top. But now you can see it is a 50-50% mix between a glossy and a diffuse shader, which is now outputting to the surface. Now if I change the shader, you can see it's now completely glossy and now it's completely diffused. And if we change it to 0.2, for example, you can see it's just a little bit glossy with a lot of diffuse. And if we change it to 0.8, now it's very glossy with just a little bit of diffuse. So that's a little look at the mix shader. And the mix shader just basically mixes those two together. But the add shader actually adds one on top of another. Kind of or sim very similar, actually, to the add feature in... Um, in Photoshop and any other image compositing. So you can kind of see here the difference between the two. So I'm actually going to add the previous mix shader from before, connect both of these. And yes, these can be connected to more than one source. And you'll notice as soon as I let go here, you'll notice the cube down at the bottom change. Actually, I'll go ahead and get rid of this timeline and make this window nice and big, nice and pretty. So as soon as I connect this mix shader up here, you'll notice that it really loses a lot of that brightness, and that's something that's kind of significant to the add shader. But you can kind of see the difference between the two. Even if I change the factor of the mix shader to be more like the glossy when I connect the 
add shader up here, it becomes this nice kind of mixture of the two, but not quite a mixture, more of a uh, overlapping of the two. And to finish off this episode, we'll add in one more shader just for the heck of it. And we're going to be looking at the glass shader. Now, say you want to make a window. The glass shader has got your back. So if we go ahead and delete these other two and we connect our glass shader to the surface, we can see that it kind of has the same thing as before where it's kind of glossy, but you'll notice you can actually see through it. So you can see that the cube on the other side is right there and it actually has accurate refraction as well. So with this, it's a little bit funky. There are a lot more settings than the other two, so I'll move these two out of the way. So you can change the color just like the others, just like that. Now it's blue glass, but if I want it to be pure white, we change these all to one. We also have roughness, just like we had before, which kind of makes it a little bit harder to see through and a little bit more diffuse. So now you can see that's really, really kind of blurred back there versus how it is when there is no blurring. And then we also have this thing called IOR. Now IOR, from what I understand, stands for Index of Refraction. Now what refraction is, is it's when light bounces off of any given surface. So in this case, it's bouncing off of the glass shader on our cube here. So the IOR basically changes from what angle it's, or how reflective it is and to what degree it's reflective. So if I change this to 0.01, so it's just a little bit, little bit fuzzy. And then we change the IOR and we boost it up. You can see it's very reflective. Well, if we change it to point 0.2, actually point 0.2, it seems to be extremely reflective as well. So you have to play with this a little bit. You can see the sphere generating here, which is actually, I believe, from um, the way that gets rendered, the way it refra refra refracts light. So let's try 1.2. 1.2, you can see, you can see through it a little bit better. 1.1. And you can see it also distorts it a little bit. So if you watch this little left border right here of the cube and we change this back to 1.2, you'll notice that border is gone. If we change this to one, one flat, you see that it, everything has its own setting. So it's very, very, actually you'll see the lower the IOR is, the more um, see-through it is until you get to like one. One is kind of your threshold as to where it becomes completely invisible. And from there, it just gets more reflective as you go up or less reflective as you go down. And I believe, for whatever reason, if you're wondering this, the uh, IOR for water is 1.333, just in case you're wondering for maybe a glossy material, for example. But we'll get into that a little bit later with Fres or Fren Frenels, not Fresnels, as I've learned recently. <laughs> So that's just kind of a basic overview to materials in Blender. We went over the diffuse, glossy, and glass shaders. So I want to kind of incorporate my viewers a little bit more in this. So please tell me what you guys think of this tutorial. And also, if you made something using this tutorial, go ahead and link it down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are making, especially because I know that I taught you and that you are now being more creative, and I just think that's really awesome. So thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you ever want to learn something, go ahead and just leave a comment down there and I will hopefully be able to do it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Adios. Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here. And today I'm with you for a tutorial on how to make these really awesome photorealistic metal shaders in Blender. And I'm also going to teach you how to customize it for your own use.